All right, everybody, we are live with Frightmare HQ. Welcome to the show today. Uh, my name is Lloyd Cryer, and I'm here with Charles Doze. I'm here. Howdy, Charles. What's up, Lloyd? What are we doing? We are talking to Mitch Wilson, director of Knucklebones. Oh, yeah. That we Hello, are. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Howdy. We are good. How are you doing out there, Mitch? Good. How's my hair look? Oh, that's, your hair looks great. Not as good as mine. We, we, we're sporting <laughs> that nice stylish style here. We're doing our thing. So, Mitch, we're on here to talk to him about Knuckle Bones. Now, this is a movie that was made locally, right? This is a local DFW film. Is that correct? Yes, we shot it in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, primarily at the Cutting Edge Haunted House attraction in Fort Worth. Nice. Yeah. How'd you get we to film there? We turned it into like a mini studio. That's cool. So, are you? Uh, were you working at Cutting Edge? Did you know who ran it? You know who ran Cutting Edge? How did you get to film there? I did not. My producer is a haunter. Uh, uh, he's really big into uh, you know haunted house attractions, and he he had a connection there. So he was very excited to shoot there. And then when I saw the location, I mean, it was just perfect for our script. So nice. Everyone thinks we built our sets, but we actually. Those sets exist. We just redress them to fit the movie. But uh, yeah, I mean, that, that place is amazing. I recommend checking it out. I, I believe it's the largest haunt in the U.S. Yeah, and they're open right now, aren't they, for ha the Halloween Probably. season? Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very That's scary. Awesome. So how did you get started? What was the idea behind this film? Well, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is my favorite movie. And I was working as a writer in Los Angeles. And when it came time to direct my first film, uh, I'm the Texas guy. So I knew I wanted to shoot it in Texas in the summer with the chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm also a big gamer. So I wanted to combine a Jumanji type movie with a slasher movie. And that just evolved into um, uh, knuckle bones which is the name of the game uh, that they use to summon the demon and then the demon itself is called knuckle bones he's a big skeletal demon so gotcha so your your influence was texas chainsaw massacre and jumanji yes and obviously i love jason and freddie and all that and uh uh knuckle bones talks like freddie but he kills kind of like Jason and he enjoys warm summer nights like Leatherface. Awesome. That's, that's great. So you were, you said you were writing in LA. So what made you want to come back to Texas? Is it just the beautiful heat that we have? Well, um, I uh, sold a script to Eli Roth, my first horror script, and that didn't get made, but, um, you know, I wanted to, I knew I wanted to make a horror and, you know, I'm from here. So you can just use the resources of family and friends and everything when you're making a low budget, you know, independent film. It just made sense to come back and shoot it here. Plus, I, you know, I just love Texas and I, I just love the feel of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, that just that unbearable heat. It just and uh, I wanted to uh, we actually did shoot in August, the worst month. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so, so, but no, it was a great location, and you know, it was a, you know, it was a great shoot. Cool. What did what did what did Eli do with your script? Did he? Where is it? He, he bought it, but uh, they never made it. Unfortunately, I mean that that happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. So Basically, he came in and optioned, finish. optioned yes. the script. Yeah. Mm. No, he bought he bought it. He just it bought it straight close. up. Yeah, he bought it. Um. But uh, he ended up uh, making another movie. You might have heard of it called Hostel. So uh, no, I never heard of that. That's that's a new one to me. I have heard of Knuckle Bones. Though. I have heard of Knuckle Bones too. Okay. <laughs> and so this is the unrated director's cut. So is this the second release of this? Yes. Yeah, so the movie came out in 2016, and uh, the day it was released, I found out that they had edited some of my favorite kills, which is for a director is soul crushing. I mean, uh, they're still in there, but they're not quite as, you know, as I intended. So uh, I always wanted to make a director's cut and I always, which is a new version of the film. It's got a much faster pacing, uh, added some scenes I always wanted to put back in there, but also we put all the unrated footage back in. And then I went back in and found everything I could 
and made the uncut unrated. So it's got all of the good stuff in it. And this is the first time that you can see every bit of it. So um, Horror Pack did like a Blu-ray of the Month Club. And until then, that was the only Blu-ray version of the movie, uh, except for Germany. We thought our movie would get banned in Germany because we kill Nazis and we have the swastika and all that. But it turns out they love that stuff. Oh, they put out they put out two media books and two Blu-rays in Germany of our movie. So oh, that's this great. Is like the uh, the artwork is from the German Blu-ray. So very okay. cool artwork. Tried really to get is. that artist to commission something new for this version, but uh, they can't find him. <laughs> so, <Aww. laughs> so, uh, so yeah. He's so you said the, the first grid. release, they, they cut some stuff out. Was that the distributor? I mean, did they do that without you knowing? Did you just kind of... Yes, I did not know. Um, you know, what I know now is that wherever, whatever platform you go on, it's someone's job to cut something. So um, they just happened to cut my two favorite sequences that I think uh, really make the movie, uh, you know, I, I, it did really well at festivals. And there's some scenes where when they would play at the festival, everyone would kind of lean forward in their chair and then you got them for the rest of the movie. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I put those scenes back in. But yeah, I found out the day of and the distributor was like very apologetic. And I won't say who edited it, but, you know, that's just that's just <laughs> the nature of the business now. Now I know to make it really over the top so you can pull back some and still get uh, the movie you wanted. But uh yeah. So, yeah, so this is going to be a new version going forward. There's probably going to be a director's cut, but for the unrated director's cut, this is all that's available right now. And uh, it's, it's coming out on the 30th uh, next week. And uh, you can pre-order right now at knucklebones.org. Knucklebones.org. Knucklebones.com. That is a children's event planning service. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, a different, that's a different site. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, and uh, they're very nice and they're very complimentary of our movie and everything, but it is, is not a horror movie <laughs> website. So, dot .org is where you want to go. Dot .org. Dot .org. So, this one, did you self-distribute this one or is this the same distributor? How did this one Well, I have out? a new distributor on board for this, but for right now, I'm doing direct distributing. Um, uh, just because I want to get the Blu-ray out there and I wanted to get it out in time for Halloween, but we'll eventually be back on all the platforms uh, with the director's cut version. Um, but yes. So we were just looking at the uh, the special features. It says you have yes. a feature at making the effects with Academy Award winning effects legend Robert Short of Beetlejuice and Chopping Mall. That's great. Yes. Yes. He, uh, <clears throat> Bob, uh, Bob Short. Um, I know. Uh, He's a legend in the business. He's worked on uh, everything. He's He was friends with uh, my producer and myself from putting on these uh, haunts. And um, he, he won an Academy Award for Beetlejuice, you know, the last great practical effects movie. And I really wanted to have practical effects, uh, to, you know, like the movies in the 80s. And uh, it was a perfect fit. And he was so nice to come on board and do it. Yeah, he designed... And all these guys work in teams, so I don't want to imply that he did all of this stuff, but he, right. uh, he designed the robots in Shopping Mall. Yeah. He, he worked on the original Predator costume, the Van Damme one. Yep. Um, he did the tail in uh, Splash. Oh, that's uh, cool. He, he worked on the original Halloween and was with the group of guys that found the William Shatner mask when they did that. Uh, and he got his start um, in the original Planet of the Apes doing makeup on, you know, that was an amazing <laughs> makeup movie. Uh, yeah, it was. So, uh, yeah, he's just done everything. And he was so nice to come and uh, do our low budget movie. And uh, he designed the creature and uh, he designed all of the all the effects. And they're all most of them are practical. A couple we had to do CGI. When you see the movie, you see why. But, uh, yeah, I think they. I think they came out great. Um, I want to know more about the character. Is there anything more you can tell us about uh, the villain in this film without giving away too much? Yes. Well, um, at, at the beginning of the movie, the Germans are losing the war and they decide to uh, try and create a supernatural super soldier. And uh, it doesn't go well for them. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
It and, never uh, does. It never does. <laughs> and they summon uh, uh, Knucklebones, who is a skeletal demon. And the idea is that the ritual has existed for thousands of years, but the Nazis this time brought him back in this form. Um, and uh, he uh, cut to modern day, a bunch of kids find what we call the bone dice and they accidentally summon our demon. And he has a very dark sense of humor. Um, so like I say, he does talk uh, and uh, some people, one of the traditional, you know, the silent killer, which I love, but I just wanted to inject a little humor. And uh, so I had him speak, but uh, yeah, so he's, he's theoretically existed in, you know, for thousands of years, he's a demon from hell. He's uh, got his own plans. He's not the typical slasher. He's got, you know, he's trying to recruit souls for hell. So I don't want to, without giving that away anything else, that's about all I could say. <laughs> so but you, he doesn't you have a signature this. weapon. Oh, he does. No, go he ahead. He does not have a signature weapon. I wanted him to just grab whatever was available. That's okay. awesome. Bob implemented the, uh, the Nazi bayonet knife, uh, but he pretty much uses whatever is at his disposal. Right. That's really cool. So you, you wrote and directed this. Is that right, Mitch? Yes. Yes. So is this legend completely of your own imagination or did you draw from anything at all for inspiration? No, it's uh, I pretty much made up the entire thing. Uh, like I said, I've, I've, I love board games and games growing up and I like the idea of implementing dice and dice made out of human knuckle bones just seemed like a, a cool transition. Originally, it was going to be a, a much, you know, it was a much bigger budget and knuckle bones was part of a, uh, you know, it was going to have multiple genres and all that. But my producer said, knuckle bones is great. Just focus on him. And so I expanded out the mythology, but yeah, it's a, I created it all myself. That's really cool. That, that is really cool. Tell us a little bit about, um, I believe it was Tom Zimbro who played Knucklebone, right? Tom? Yeah, so he's a local actor and he's amazing, Tom Zimbro. And actually on our uh, on this Blu-ray, you can actually see his original audition, which just blew us away. So uh, this is the first time that's been made available. But um, Tom's great. I mean, he's... You know, when, we, when you're going to do something like a skeleton, hmm. it's like your choices are limited. You know, guy in a suit, CGI. Um, so when we went with guy in a suit, uh, lots of the reviews say that even though Tom is under the, you know, the mask, we have like a, we have prosthetics and a mask, depending on, you know, where we're shooting. Uh, but he, his acting really comes through and he really does an amazing job. And He's got everything you could need. Like, it's like, we needed a prop shotgun. Tom's like, I've got one. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, it's like, we need a Nazi machine gun. He's like, oh, I've got one. Uh, you know. He comes prepared. A, you mean, got an yeah. actor that, that had it all. a Nazi machine gun. Yeah, he lives, he lives in the, uh, a Fort Worth area in like an airplane hangar. And he's oh, in wow. tons of local movies. And um, yeah, so... Uh, it's like uh, we needed a fake penis. Tom's like, I happen to have one of those. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, Lloyd, you've got a whole bunch of fake. Penises. I have a collection of fake penises. Yes, yeah, you're all right, colors Charles. and sizes. Yeah, it's kind of my well, you thing. Know, I was watching Joe Bob last night, and he's got the mangled penis expert, Felissa Rose. Felissa, yeah. Oh yeah. Joe Felisa. Bob would love this movie. It's got a, that, and uh, we're sponsored by Lone Star Beer. So we've got Lone Star all the way through. Oh, you're set. Then. That's you're all you need Texas. to make a movie in Texas. Yeah, you're full exactly. Texas, yeah. Exactly. So did you run into any problems shooting in Texas at all? Well, originally we were going to shoot at an abandoned insane asylum. Oh, wow. And uh, up where I live in Sherman, Texas. Uh, and we were all set to shoot there. But then we had a tornado about a week out. And I was like, you know, if this happens during uh, production, that would be bad. So that's when we changed locations to the cutting edge. And uh, no, after after that, it pretty much, you know, it, it went pretty smooth. You know, when you have an Academy Award winner on set, you know, <laughs> everyone you know, that is as amazing as he is, everyone, you know, uh, ups their game. So, um yeah, no, it was great. The crew was amazing. Uh, Julian Jean, who is a local screen queen, uh, she she's the star. Um, but no, it was it was a great time. It was you know 
it was a grueling shoot. We shot it over nine days. Okay. And when you're shooting that fast, we, we still watch dailies, but um, when we got the final movie, it wasn't long enough. So you'll notice in the middle of the movie, there's a sequence, the meth heads, which is an infamous scene that is, they're clearly inserted as, as chainsaw fodder, but everyone loves them. <laughs> so, and it makes sense within the story why they would show up and everything. But that was something we shot after the, uh, the fact. And uh, our lead uh, meth head is uh, Todd Jenkins, who's an actor director. He made Cherokee Creek. Yeah, yes. we know familiar. Yeah, and um, he actually uh, edited this uh, film with me over the summer. This was our COVID project together. So big uh, shout out to him for making this happen. That's great. Are you going to try to get on any uh, VOD or streaming or anything like that? Or do you just want to? Yes, the original uh, in 2016, we were pretty much everywhere. So we've been all over the world. Um, but uh, when I got the rights back from the distributor, I had them pull everything because I wanted the director's cut to be the new thing. So yeah, we'll eventually be on, you know, everything. Uh, but, you know, for right now, I'm just trying to, uh, to get the Blu-ray out there. And then uh, uh, it's up to the distributor where we're going to be available. Yeah, nice. well, that's the way to go, uh, guys. If you want to pick this up, get it. Go to www.knucklebones.org and pre-order this. You're going to start shipping those next weekend, you say? Yes, on the 30th. You can that pre-order is, it now. That is awesome. That is I know awesome. everybody's looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, really. I mean, one thing we love, especially in this show, is two things. We love local horror movies, and we love practical effects, so... We got both of them here. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. For, that was... for, for Christmas, we're gonna have a special edition that includes the home game version of Knucklebone, so you can summon your own demon. Oh, oh that's game. awesome! So you're making like dice and everything too. It's gonna have it's gonna have dice and it's gonna have a poster game board. So just very like cool. Yeah. That is actually really cool. That's a cool thing yeah. to do. Hey guys, if you're just now tuning in, uh, we are live with director Mitch Wilson. His uh, new movie, or his movie, Knuckle Bones, mm -hmm. is coming out... Uh, new release of it, the Unrated Director's Cut. Unrated cut Director's Cut. It's coming out October 30th. If you guys any, have any questions for Mitch, please uh, go ahead and put them in the comments section. We will definitely uh, ask Mitch those questions for you. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, we're, we're broadcasting live today, Mitch, from the uh, Frightmare collectibles store yeah so we've been super busy um we're just breaking away to chat with you um but um yeah, i'm looking I'm forward to, to seeing it i'm excited to come there i'm i'm into collecting uh vhs's so oh awesome there's a lot of vhs there's a lot of vhs and um mitch and i were talking about having this available in store too so yeah Hopefully we'll have the have these copies available for you to buy it uh, next weekend maybe i don't know we'll see Absolutely. I will bring some by and uh, I'll be there to sign some. Uh, ho hopefully the 30th, but, you know, uh, definitely next weekend sometime. That's right. Very nice. We'll make it happen. Um, you and I'm reminded behind you, you told me you played Sitches. Nick Knucklebones played Sitches. Yes. Yes. The, How uh, cool the, was that? The, it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we uh, had our premiere world premiere at Fright Fest UK, and then uh, we played Sitges uh, after that. But yeah, it's, have you ever been to Sitges? I mean, it's it's unbelievable. I, mean, I haven't, but I, I've always heard <laughs> great things about it. Yeah, yeah it's I've like heard the great things too. It's like the can of for horror movies, and yeah. they turn the entire town into a horror festival. And you know, it's on the Mediterranean, and everyone there loves horror, and I believe they're been doing it for 51 years now 52 years so long was, so many movies have premiered as such over the last 50 years we always run into that in our year in horror like first premiered as such we always see it so much well you know i was listening to uh, the movie crib podcast <laughs> and uh adam green was talking about their movie and they said uh you have to play sidious and i'd never heard of it and then uh, i i uh, applied and we got in and, and uh you know, it was, yeah. So, yeah, Christopher Walken was the special guest that year. So, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. It was a huge honor uh, to play Sitges and Fright Fest. Fright Fest was amazing. That's like, a, they're like family, all those guys. 
Yeah, that's what I've heard. Arrow always does. They're part of Fright Fest too, aren't they? Arrow, Arrow is, video. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're spons- They're the, the sponsor, I believe. Yeah. So. Um, I do have a question from one of our viewers. Uh, JD Smith, Digi Artist, says, "I'm curious how Mitch raised the funds. Did he raise any funds with the distribution distribution deal in place, etc." No, it was uh, it was all private investors. Uh, I'd already, you know, I'd already been a writer, so uh, I used that, and I had a couple movies that had been on Netflix that are now long gone, <laughs> but uh, some comedies that I wrote. So uh, when I went to investors, uh, you know, I had a little bit of uh, industry cred, but basically it was one friend, and then uh, we had a poker game. And one guy said, if you, I was down to one chip and this guy said, if you win, I'll put in your movie. And I came back and won the poker game and then he put in and then it snowballed, <laughs> snowballed from there. So yeah, it was mostly uh, friends that invested in the movie. Well, that's so, cool. That's that kind cool. of an old school approach that yes. tried and true, you know? Yeah. Put your yes. own feet on the ground, you know, and do it. Yeah. And we had Bob Short involved. So I'm like, I had Academy Award winner coming on board. So, you know, it was. That uh, helps, I bet. Yeah, <laughs> I, I couldn't have an Academy Award because I would just carry it with me everywhere. I'd be like at the grocery store, I'd be like, hey, have you ever seen this before? <laughs> I got one of these. I'd be like, hold on, let me put it back in my shirt. Did you feel any pressure working with um, someone of that stature? No, I, I'd known Bob for years just hanging out and building haunted houses, mm-hmm. you know, just working, you know, long days doing builds. And when we got on set, I got to see, you know, the effects wizard. And, you know, I was just, you know, I was in awe, but, you know, we were still friends. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so the first time he <clears throat> I met with him, he he designed the suit and it was very much like a demon. And I'm like, no, I just want like a skeleton. I want him maybe mummified. And he goes, I know exactly what you want. And then uh, they showed me the, the suit like a week before we were shooting and it was perfect. It was exactly what I wanted. And then he showed me he storyboarded and, you know, a lot of low budget you can't afford to have a storyboarder, but he's a, you know, he's an amazing artist. So he had not only designed the suit, but he, he storyboarded all the kills and uh, he even added uh, some cool dialogue and he embellished on the mythology. He really got into the, the, the Nazis and all the little props, all, you know, he, he, he did so much work on it. And uh, I was just like, wow, it's like, it's a real movie now. (laughs) So, and then, uh, uh, there's a, during the featurette, he talks about how, you know, I let him do pretty much what he wanted to do. Well, first of all, you want your effects guy to shoot your effects because they know how they're going to work. So they know the best angle to get when you're shooting. Uh, so he directed uh, most of the effects themselves. Uh, but also, uh, you know, you just got to trust, you know, a guy like that. I mean, uh, you know, everyone was like uh, willing to pitch in to make the effects work. And, you know, they all respected Bob and he's a great guy. So, you know. Very true. Um, we we do have a few more questions if you don't mind answering them, Mitch. Sure, sure. Um, um, one of them, I don't know if you want to tell us exactly, but somebody's curious what the budget was. Did you, when you say a, a, a low budget film, are we talking about, Less than a million or more than a million? Less than a million. Uh, it, the budget was a hundred thousand. Oh wow, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. So good for you. I think people say it looks like a studio film, and uh, Philip Roy, he's a DP based out of Austin. He, uh, I actually said, I want it to look like the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Okay. And and so that's what we're going for, and Julian's outfit kind of reflects that. Um, and then, uh, that's pretty much how, uh, Phil lit it. So, um, yeah, it was about a hundred thousand. And then, you know, you have to throw in a few more dollars, you know, along the way Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For, for promotion and post, but that's, that was basically our budget. Yeah. That's awesome. That um, awesome. Richard Nettleton asks any funny accidents happen on the set? Uh, well, uh, Funny accidents. No, we did have the happy accident, which you see uh, as soon as you put the Blu-ray in, you see a uh, knuckle bones with the machete in the rain outside of a house as he walks up to a house. 
and that rain is real rain. It just started, you know, we had the, we shot it on the red and uh, the red one and started right as we were grabbing that shot. Everyone in the neighborhood, we shot in uh, that part in Highland Park in Dallas. Okay. So we had the entire neighborhood come to watch us shoot and then it started raining and we were able to grab some real rain in that shot. So that was our big happy accident. It looks, it looks great. It looks amazing. So it's it oh, really cool. good. We had a question from uh, Ben Gerst asked if you're planning on any doing any sequels to this. Yes, uh, uh, I'm pitching the sequel right now. Uh, to my manager's uh, got a new production company, okay. and it's written. And I wanted to do something else first. Uh, I've, I I did an anthology film uh, last year, and that was amazing. It's called For We Are Many, which is a lot of the Fright Fest guys. Um, and it was 13 stories, 13 demons, and we're doing one next year. It's uh, 13 Lovecraft stories. Oh, wow. But uh, I really have a great idea that I want to do for part two. And um, there was another movie that came out uh, right after ours called Bone Jangles. I've and heard of that. I've heard of Bone Jangles as well. He's got like a skeleton-based bones-cracking slasher in his movie. And as I started promoting the Blu-ray, um, fans online said they wanted a versus movie so uh brett the director of that said yeah i'm up for it so we're gonna have some talks about maybe uh, knuckle bones versus bone jangles who knows but that's a uh, fun idea so, yeah so <laughs> nice little crossover so, there people always enjoy those yeah that is cool and you don't get to see them too you know too much because i'm sure that's difficult to licensing especially stuff. a you know cross studio type of thing but as an independent maker right. filmmaker you can you know have a little more freedom with that kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah. If, you know, tonally, they're they're kind of different. So, I mean, I'd all have to get together with Brett and uh, see what we c can come up with. But, yeah, Knuckle Bones 2 is definitely being pitched right now. So, hopefully, uh, we'll have that very soon. Uh, let's see. I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Richard Nettleson is, Nettleton is asking, have you directed anything other than movies or any other movies? Um. I directed, uh, this was the my directing debut. I directed uh, the anthology. For We Are Many. Uh, For We Are Many. And that was basically a short because there were 13 of them. And um, I had directed uh, some, some pilots. Uh, we tried to, uh, well, I came up with, uh, I wanted to do a zombie television show. Okay. And uh, everyone was like, that'll never work. <laughs> <laughs> who's ever gonna watch zombie television show right right i was like no it'd be great we, we can kill off the characters i mean zombie movies at the time were kind of like the same thing you had to hit this beat and yeah. you know what's happening boom 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 like with a television show you can expand upon it and uh you know we pitched it to, to some people and actually a lot of them really liked the idea i'm just joking but you know i did it's like who am i you know i didn't have the street cred uh to get something like that off the ground. Um, so I've been directing, you know, behind the scenes, you know, short films and stuff like that. But uh, <clears throat> Knuckle Bones and For We Are Many are my two official directing jobs. Gotcha. So you did start off writing, like you mentioned. What made you want to go to directing? Is it something you always want to transition to? Or is it something that just kind of happened because you had this idea? Well, um, you I always wanted to be a writer. I never really uh, envisioned a directing, but you know, I when you're directing, there's so many moving parts, and I just love like I love that there's an effects and that you know it's like being in charge. You have a, you the overall vision. You just have more control over to get you know as a writer, it's all in your head, and then when someone else makes it, you know, good or bad, it's not how you wanted it. So uh, I decided to just you know try my hand at it. And uh, I loved it. And I also love producing. I just produced a comedy in uh, New Mexico last year. Uh, we shot it in Albuquerque. And uh, I was the sole producer for that. And uh, that was a $150,000 budget. And that was, that was a great shoot too. So that should be coming out soon. So What's the name of that one? Pescador. Pescador. Yeah. That's a good name. It rolls right off the tongue. Pescador. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, uh, we just want to remind y'all that we are talking to director, writer, Mitch Wilson. 
about his release coming up of uh, Knuckle Bones October 30th. The director's cut, guys. Unrated. Director's cut. The dirty version. Unrated. That's <laughs> the way we like them here. We like yep. them down and dirty. Um, you yep. can go to knucklebones.org. Dot org. Not dot com because it's a children's thing. So you don't yeah. want that one. <laughs> Wrong yeah, Knuckle Bones. Yeah, it's team building for kids camp stuff. I'm glad you keep reminding people of that because somebody's going to go to knucklebones.com and be like, what kind of movie is this? Be like, <laughs> they, get, they get it all the time. <laughs> I'm not going to copy do. of your movie and they're like, I don't have a movie. Search <laughs> Knuckle Bones on Twitter and it's us and them. <laughs> That's so great. That's awesome. There's awesome. actually a dice company out now named Knuckle Bones. So <laughs> Look at that. Pretty, yeah. So. You've inspired several people, obviously. I'm going to say that, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say he did, because it's a great name, though. I mean, you don't see many. This is a great idea, a great story, because you don't see a lot, like you're mentioning, with this sort of Jumanji-type horror-esque. Mm -hmm. And it really is a great idea, and I'm, I'm looking forward to to a sequel, like you said. I mean, I think there's it's a cool character that you developed. I think there's a lot that you, you could do with that character. So looking forward Thank to what, you, what we can see in the future from this. Um, Thank you very much, Charles. Yeah, no, no, we really yeah. appreciate it. And, you know, you you seem to have a lot of good ideals, so I'm looking forward to other stuff that maybe you have coming out too because you know, I love original ideals because so much stuff is rehashed nowadays, and this is definitely original ideal with practical effects. So it's my favorite thing. Right. So what else What else do, do you want to tell our, our audience about this film? Is there anything else that uh, they need to know? We've gone over the, the practical effects. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, Julian Jean is a great uh, screen queen. She's been in a lot of stuff, and she does a really great job. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she's actually a, a writer-director now as well. She's an amazing writer. But, uh, yeah, I mean, um, uh, oh, so we've, we've got all-new sound mix. So we've got a new 5.1 mix for the, the Blu-ray. We've got a few new scenes. We've got new credit sequences. And I'm excited for people to see the end credits. I did something a little different that I've always wanted to try that I'd never seen before. Okay. So I don't want to spoil, I don't want to spoil it. But uh, <laughs> so, so the end credits on this one is different than what it was before? Is that what we're saying? Yes. Yes. Oh, you that's great. It? I I'll go ahead and spoil it. Spoil it for us. <laughs> he likes spoilers. All right, I won't spoil it. <laughs> no, go ahead. Spoil it for Okay, me. so um, at the end of the movie, when the credits come up, we show each actor, but uh, we show a still of them in their death sequence. So Ooh. It's, uh, it's the characters as, as they got killed in the movie. So you get to see the effects again, and it was, uh, yeah. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. Okay, I've so you basically that. run through the death, the death sequences at the end. I show, I show, you know, I show each character. It's just at the point where they died. So it's another That's way to, cool you know, to show the effects one more time. And um, yeah, so I thought that was neat. I've never seen it before. Have you guys ever seen that in the film? I don't I'm think sure I have. Done. Yeah, I don't see. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen a kill shot at the end. I've seen shots of characters again from the movie, but not. The exact kill yeah. shot so not of everybody there's, cool. there's some pretty great kills I, th I think you'll like it there's homages to uh uh friday 13th and ah. uh, text chainsaw massacre in there and obviously the freddy uh lines are in there so yeah so we've got a cover art so it's actually a double double-sided cover art too is this the original yes yeah, so uh for the for the distributors that are uh uh Pentagram shy. We have a pentagram free version. You can flip it <laughs> to, yeah, so. and it features the uh, chainsaw. It looks like is this done by the right, same yeah, artist? Is this the same artist who did this one? That's here. Uh, yeah. The well, that's the actual. Uh, that's a still from the film that face. <laughs> um, and then uh, it it is not the same artist. Um, when I contacted the distributor that did this, uh, the Red Skull, they gave me all of their. Um, uh, variations and if you get the one of the German media books I believe has that on the back but I thought it was a neat uh, front cover so I just wanted to you know have flippable artwork in there yeah and then when we do the home game version 
uh, the dice will actually be small enough to fit in the top of the Blu-ray and then oh, the really? poster, so, it'll, so it'll all be inside <laughs> self-contained. So you'll be able to fit them in your, your little your little corner here? Oh yeah, it looks like right up here where right the little here, edge exactly, is. Yeah. So, that is. That's really cool. Yeah, you know, and then we'll have some size uh, dice uh, to buy uh, as well. So. Well, both both covers are actually really good. You know, one of my it's a little thing, but one of my favorite things of, on artwork for Blu-rays and even posters is the use of white because so many horror movies like to use so much dark in there. And I really love nice, colorful images on white backgrounds. You don't see it a lot. Everybody wants to just throw dark in there, really dark shots. So this actually is really cool on both of them. Thank oh, you. Yeah, yeah our, our original poster was uh, darker and green, and I like the original poster, but I just wanted to do something different. And everybody just loves this. <laughs> skull um, the skull is great I, yeah. I do like the white we actually made it even wider so it pops a little more for this version that's that was that's why German. i like white so much because white really makes especially images like this it makes yeah. reds and oranges really pop so it looks really good i'm a poster Thank nerd you. so Thank i like you. posters and <laughs> artwork so yeah really great though really great artwork uh Thank todd you. lewis just posted he commented and said he went to the site 1999 price point i'm going to pre-order one Definitely, so, guys. All right. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks for ordering one of those. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. <clears throat> um, anybody else that wants to uh, um, order this, go to knucklebones.org, and you can uh, get it ordered. He's shipping October 30th. Is that correct? Yes. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, I am really it. looking forward to this. I'm, I'm definitely watching this as soon as I'm not crazy busy anymore. And uh, you guys I, got the first copies, actually, the advanced copy. I gave you two the first copies. We're special guys, all right. <laughs> we're super you special. special. We're kind of a big deal. We're kind of a big deal. I met Mitch at the uh, Texas Chainsaw screening, and uh, he came up and showed us his movie, and I was like, "Wow, this is really cool." So, yeah, thank you for introducing yourself at the show, Mitch. It was, it's been an honor. Oh, you guys were super cool, and uh, I was like. I really wanted to get it in your store and you volunteered, Hey, we could use this in our store. We're opening a new store. I'll be like, Oh, that's, that's great. Because when I lived in uh, Burbank out in California, they have dark delicacies. Which oh yeah. Is dark delicacies. The kind of the same concept, I think. And, um, but it was a pop-up store for a while and now I think it's permanent, but I love that we have one in Texas now, Frightmare Collectibles. So I'm excited to come check it out. We we can't wait to have you over and and maybe we can do an official signing out here or something. Uh, I don't know when you're available. We can definitely talk uh, when we're offline here and figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Tom lives in the area. He may be uh, shooting something right now, but I'm sure we could get him there too. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd, that'd be, be cool. great. Bones himself. Yeah, that would be cool. You know, um, be cool to get you guys here and have you guys sign stuff and you know have this offered to everybody. I guess like I said before, we do love local movies like this and definitely one though guys you know go out and pre-order it right now it's a, a great one it's a great way to support local filmmaking you know but also it's it's what we love it's horror it's practical yes. effects so help fund the sequel help You're fund the sequel. the sequel when you buy it <laughs> awesome todd lewis uh also said uh, while he was on the website on your website knucklebones.org that you have a trailer for the film so you can go to knucklebones.org and check out the trailer and and see if this movie's for you and i'm going to guess that it probably is if you're watching if, this show if you're watching the show this movie's for you all right <laughs> if you could say that yeah the trailer's pretty great the trailer was on my distributor's website for three years after we came out we were their number one selling film and uh yeah so it's pretty wow that's trailer. awesome that is awesome well, it sounds fun. It sounds like uh, you're you're going to get a lot of mileage out of this film here in the states. Yes. Uh, at this point, you know, with the the great unrated Blu-ray, so we're really excited for you, and uh, we wish you the best of luck with this movie. Definitely. Thanks, guys. So, do you have Enjoy anything it. else that you need to share with everybody, or have we covered everything? <laughs> Uh, I think we've covered everything. You know, I was I was hoping to do a signing at your store, and it looks like that may happen. So, I mean, I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. And yeah. we we even have some people asking. Richard Nettleton asked if you're going to do an in store signing before we even mentioned it. So, yeah, we'd love to have you on, out here at some point. Absolutely, let's definitely make it happen. 
Let's do it. Let's do it. But yeah, Mitch. it was great talking to you, Mitch. It really was. Um, I'm glad we met you at the at the the chainsaw screening, and we got to talk about this movie. So it's that's the part of the fun of doing this. We get to meet you guys and talk to you guys. So yeah, thank you. Again. I love your show, and I love I love your enthusiasm for horror. It's just you know I really appreciate it. And, it's uh, what we live for, Mitch. Yeah, we got a problem, is. so I <laughs> try. I appreciate it, Charles Lloyd. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, we'll keep everybody uh, informed about uh, where we're headed with all of this, and mm -hmm. if we get everything set up and when it's going to happen, and uh, we'll just make sure we get as many people out here as possible. Yes. Richard Nettleton asked if we're going to screen it now. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, no, Richard you got to buy the Blu-ray. Come on, man. I don't want to get greedy, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I would well, I was going to do the screening, obviously, but then uh, all of this happened. Yeah, yeah. So you know, maybe when uh, Frightmare rolls around, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's it. Hopefully, hopefully we get the virus out of here by then, and yeah, we we'll, can go back to normal. We'll get knuckle bones on the virus to get rid of it for us. So. Please. Yeah. All right. Please. Well, fantastic, though. Fantastic. Thank guys, you, Mitch. Just um, to remind everybody again, it's uh, knucklebones.org. Don't go to .com. Knucklebones.org. <laughs> and you can pre-order this right now. And Lloyd will start working on uh, maybe an in-store. And once he gets that, we'll get some information about that as well out to everybody. Awesome. Yeah, before we let you go, Richard Nettleton asked if we could do a live in-store reenactment of the entire movie. I'll do it. <laughs> Can I be the scream queen? I want to be the scream queen. Richard, you're kind of, you're kind of being a smart ass now. That's enough of you. Tom would actually probably be up for that. <laughs> All right. Okay. But remember, I'm the scream queen, though. I have to be the scream queen. So. Oh. But again, Tom's audition for Knuckle Bones is on this Blu-ray, and if you want to see just some raw, oh, I Tom's do. Imbron, check <laughs> I it do. Out. I mean, He's actually got a, line, a bunch of lines in the audition that got cut from the film, but now you can see him in the audition. Now we can watch it all. Well, this is this comes just in time for Halloween, guys. Yeah, it does. Uh, this is going to be one of my pre-Halloween films, and I hope it will be uh, yours as well. Make sure you go and pick it up. Uh, Knucklebones.org. Thank you so much, Mitch. I appreciate mm -hmm. you coming on today, and uh, we'll keep everybody updated on on what's going on in the world of Mitch Wilson. Yeah, we will. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you, Mitch. Good talking to you. I'm going to try to take you off the screen. You might have to jump, just jump out and end it on your side. Okay. We don't know anything about technology. Yeah, we don't know. Everybody here knows that. We don't know technology, guys. Look, all we know about is horror movies. We don't know about, you know, newfangled... Computer wizen and intermanets and gigabytes and megabytes <laughs> and, and titibytes. We don't know about any of that stuff. We don't know. As they just saw when I was switching everything over, everything went wacky. So, Man, I don't know. I'm just here to look pretty and talk about horror movies. It's all you I want to do with my pretty. life. You are looking pretty. Um, Todd Jar is coming to check out the store when the show's over. Well, we'll still be here. <laughs> we're around. Yeah. Um, again, guys, yeah, we're... we're Looks a little different in the background. We're streaming in Frightmare Collectibles today. Yeah. Uh, Lloyd Store is open now. Soft opening started yesterday. I think we're open until 10 o'clock today. We're open until 10 o'clock. Yes, sir. We've been having a good time. We've seen a lot of you guys come out here already. Uh, it's been really busy, and it's been uh, really heartwarming to see you all come out and support the store. So thank you very much for doing that. Yeah. Uh, We've gotten free beer. We've had, uh, what was that? Who's that? Jeff brought this beer out to us. Was yeah. it Jeff? What was his name? Jeff Evans? Jeff Evans. Jeff yeah. Evans brought us some uh, amazing IPF&A, 10% uh -huh. alcohol by volume. He was trying to liquor us up. I don't know what he was trying to do, but he was doing something. And then Michael brought me um, some of that funnel cake ale. That's in the back. That's pretty cool. We've had some uh, people come out and bring me beer already. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, the store is open. Um Till 10 today, and then tomorrow we're open 12 to 5. Uh, Todd Lewis asked him, but I'm sorry, Todd Lewis asked about the Tom Savini mask if they sold out. Yes, we just sold the last of them this morning. Yeah. Uh, we had five left when we opened this morning, and they're all gone. Uh, Richard said, if I knew about the free beer, you would have called in sick to work 
and came, oh, he would have called in sick to work. Yeah, came man. out to the store. We've always got hey. You guys can come out here, enjoy the store. If you feel like bringing us beer, sure, we'll take it. You know, absolutely, we don't mind beer. We've got a cooler up front. We've so got we, a cooler. We can cool put it in down. there and keep it keep it cold. So yeah, thanks everybody. Uh, the store is in um, Justin, Texas. But if you throw it up on Google, Frightmare Collectibles, you get the address, or go on Facebook. And yeah, you can be able just to, on Waze or Waze, Wiz, or Google, Google. You can just say put in Frightmare Collectibles. It'll take you right to us. Uh, but if you need the address, it's 17521 Matinee Road, Suite 6100. You can go to FrightmareCollectibles.com and get the address and all the info there as well. Uh, we're going to be opening up the website for those of you who weren't able to make it out this weekend. We're going to open that up, I don't know, maybe Sunday night, maybe Monday. We'll see what happens. Uh, thank you, J.D. Smith. Um, for the congratulations on Twitch. I appreciate that very much. I want to say thank you uh, to everybody that has joined us this weekend, watching the show, coming out to Frightmare Collectibles. Yeah. What else you got, Charles? Thank you, everybody, again, as well. I just want to remind everybody that we're, uh, we're not doing our normal Twitch Prime watch party tonight. Um, we're going to continue that next week on Halloween night. We're going to do a screening. woo -hoo, Halloween. And, uh, actually, Travis Brown is going to join us. Downtown Travis, Travis Brown. Brown is going to join us on Halloween. And I'm not sure if he chose a movie yet, but Travis Brown is going to choose the movie. We're going to watch it on Halloween night, Twitch Prime Watch Party. Um, going to be really, really fun. And I want to thank our Patreons who came out last night, not only to the store, but we also did a Patreon-exclusive private screening of Nightmare on Elm Street. At the Cinemark in Dallas. That was a lot of fun. I'd never seen it in theaters. So I really enjoyed watching that movie. And getting to see all of our Patreon peeps. So, And I'm sorry I missed you guys last night. I, I really missed out. Nobody was there to hold my hand. You know? <laughs> Charles, you movie. can handle it. I know you're a I big boy. I was scared. <laughs> I was so scared. And Travis just told me he picked Nightbreed to watch next weekend. All right. Nightbreed. We're watching Nightbreed. Is that on Amazon? It's Prime? on Prime. All right. <laughs> that dude. is on Prime. Um, that's kind of where we're, we're at right now. Um, everybody else, yeah, we're, we'll be back on Wednesday for our Year in Horror series. What year are we up to now? 90... 19... 93? I think so. 93. I was going to say something funny, but... I, 90, what, 90 whatever. 90 whatever. Just 90 the, whatever. 90s. the 90s. We're in the 90s. We're in the 90s. How close are we um, getting to Scream? A few years out. <laughs> We're still a few years Look, out guys, from Scream. 90s does this. Now, I'm going to tell you guys this next year is... Uh, I'm kind of struggling <laughs> to, to put together some movies for you. But, uh, you know... I'm doing my best for you. I'm doing my best. But that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we're Just to remind everybody as well, two Sundays from now, which is November 2nd, I think. I think, I think you're right. No? Two Sundays? Two. I don't know. Let's look at the calendar, Charles. We've, we've, we've got a uh, show coming up with our awesome friends at Arrow Video. Mm. Uh, we tried to do a... We try to do a show with them every, I don't know, every couple months, every few months. Uh, I believe that's November 1st, Sunday, November 1st. It looks like it. Sunday yeah. is the first, yeah. So Sunday, November 1st, guys, um, <clears throat> we have it up on uh, Frightmare HQ Facebook page at an event, but Arrow Video is going to join us again. Like I said, we try to do this kind of quarterly with them. We bring in the good folks at Arrow. They talk about what they have upcoming. They usually give us a few surprises. Um, it's usually as much fun for us as it is for you guys because sometimes we don't actually know some of the stuff we're going to get. So looking forward to that. Um, it would be at 11 a.m. our time on that Sunday. It's a little bit earlier, but you got to keep in mind that Arrow Video is in London. So yeah. it's like 5 p.m. for them. So we got to kind of work that in there together. So it's yeah. a good time for both of us. Got to keep, got to make sure we do it where it's not 2 in the morning for them. Yeah. <laughs> Try to keep us both happy. Yeah, November 1st. Um, Todd Jara asked if that was my purse or your purse back there. Oh, that's my purse, guys. That's my purse. Yeah, absolutely. That's Fabulous. a good That's a good purse. Is that, that your is, purse? That's that, a nice purse. Yeah. I don't know. That's one of that's, our wives' purses. I don't know. No, it's my purse. I carry my things in there, man. <laughs> I carry my um, 
I carry my ball gags in there. I carry my Buffalo Bill um, nightgowns and robes. Uh, I carry my Jason Mass uh, lube. Um, I carry copies of Battlefield Earth with me everywhere I go yeah. <laughs> on VHS. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing here. But uh, Richard Nettleton also asked, does not Arrow have its own streaming service and app? Yes, they do. They, they do. Um, so Arrow Video just started their streaming service and their app. So they actually... For a while, we're streaming through like Apple TV and through I think um, Amazon maybe at one point through some yeah, sort of yeah they thing. had some stuff on Amazon but they actually have their own streaming uh, service right now um, it is I believe it's Arrow I have to pull it up here give me one second guys yeah I always I always forget the website too but yes they do have their own um, Charles is looking at it. Uh, Arrow-player.com, guys. So arrow-player.com. Um, Arrow actually kicked off their own streaming service this month, the beginning of this month, October. And it's actually through Roku. So if you're in Roku and you throw an Arrow, you actually get their so, um But also through like Android and Google Play, lots of that stuff. So uh, right now they're giving a 30-day free trial. So if you sign up, I mean, this is a lot of really awesome horror movies they have streaming now. Uh, great streaming copies, and you get 30 days free. And even then, it's only like 5 bucks a month to have this streaming service. That's a deal, man. Uh, yeah, it's a great deal. I know some. we have a lot of disc collectors out there who love the physical disc, but we also have a lot of people who are kind of more streaming people out there. So it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You know, if you don't want a lot of disc, or if you just there's some stuff you just want to stream, Check out Arrow Dash Player. They've got a kind of a lineup of what they have. There's some really good stuff on there. I've been actually watching it a lot lately while I've been working. I've had it up because just some good stuff. You can just hit boom and it's automatically going. So. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get I'm gonna get that one too because I subscribed to them when they were on Apple, mm -hmm. and I'm not an Apple guy, so I need to get something that that I can watch on Android. That's yeah, what, that's what I need to do. Man. You know, and uh, Arrow is kind of an interesting way they stream. Hey, we got a customer here that wants to come in and say hi. Let's see who oh, we who's got. Here? Hey. Hey. What's up? You coming? Come Where on, man. Out? Anyway, yeah, Arrow, guys. Arrow's interesting the way they stream because sometimes their releases will come on streaming service before. So look, we, we have somebody here with us. Go Who's ahead, here? Charles, and finish what you were no, saying. No, I was saying, sometimes Arrow Video's releases will actually hit streaming service before they release their disc. We've seen that a lot. So, we have an opposite one. Who's this? Yeah, this let's is Cynthia. I'm one of your volunteers. Yay! <laughs> Welcome! We've got one of our fantastic Frightmare volunteers here. You come out come out to uh, Frightmare Collectibles. <laughs> Maybe you can be as cool as she is and actually get on camera with us. And, yeah. Uh, we can chat with you for a minute. So, what are you up to? What are you doing? I'm going to do some shopping. Awesome. Did you find me, anything? Uh, or? Let me get some. Uh, what do you got? Wonderful pins. Oh, oh, look at that hearse pin. What else you got? Uh, let's see. What else did we get? We got a tumbler, too, out there that might have been picked up. A tumbler. Awesome. Oh, another look pin. Look at that. Aren't those oh, pins, the pins cool? Oh, the Halloween pins are awesome. I like this one because if you tilt it this way, the coffin comes out. It slides out. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you can see it, but it's in the package, so it, it's That's having cool. a hard time. Get a coffin. The coffin slides out of the back of the uh, uh, the hearse. So, <laughs> Richard said he spies beer in the back. That's the funnel cake ale. Yeah, that's our funnel oh. cake ale that somebody brought us up here. Uh, Michael Root brought that up here. Remember, so guys, cool. you can come join us on camera, but bring some beer and maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll like you even more. That's how it is. All right. What's that? <laughs> She, she wants me to show off. Oh, what do you got? Look, a Frightmare oh, tattoo. Frightmare. That is awesome. All right, so if you don't have a Frightmare tattoo, <laughs> you need one too. Also, if you want to get a Frightmare HQ tattoo of me and Lloyd's face, feel free to do that. Uh, yeah, just get that one on your whole chest. The whole chest, <laughs> you know. Or maybe get like Lloyd on one breast and me on the other and then shake him around. That's right. <laughs> That's what I did. I just want to show everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I talk to Lloyd, I'm like, hey, Lloyd. How are well, this you doing? Is, this is pretty awesome that we can have you on, Absolutely. Cynthia. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for coming out. Absolutely. You're awesome. 
I You're try. always awesome. We I love try. her. <laughs> uh, you guys have seen her at the show before because she's always got that big smile on. Smile and just makes Absolutely. you feel warm and welcome. Absolutely. And you always run into me at will call, so. That's right. That's she's <laughs> the one who has to deal with your questions. She's like, in a smiling face. That's why That's why Lloyd doesn't put me out front because I'd be like, look, you son of a bitch. All right. This is what else going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna walk out you that door. You screwed up now, guys. <laughs> well, thank you for coming out. Absolutely. We appreciate you. Thank Absolutely. you for showing us that tattoo. We're shaking. We're shaking on <laughs> oh, COVID nineteen. Come out and see us. Come on out, guys. Come out, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're still open today for like a bunch of more hours. I don't even know what time it is. It's a bunch of more hours that are open today. We do have another guest with us. Who's we here? have the awesome Casey Corpier. It's Casey! If you've gone to Frightmare in the last few years, then you know Casey. You know Casey from a lot of stuff. He, Heck yeah. He's large and in charge, and he's the man, big man on campus. Boom. What you doing, Casey? Uh, well, I'm buying something wicked this way comes on VHS. That's oh. what I'm talking about. Let, let's, let's get a little product placement in here. Come to Frightmare Collectibles, and you too can own your very own copy something of Something Wicked This Way Comes. But Available you can't on own it now because He's Casey's got it. buying yeah. it. Guys, That's the last copy. One and only, guys, now. Yeah, and it's also, I, I should say, I, I'm i I'm not the devil that pops up on you. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys started doing this, I got all these messages. Casey, are you the devil? I'm like, have you worked with me before? Yeah. El Diablo. <laughs> this is El Diablo. I'm not him. <laughs> You're not El Diablo, It's a huh? secret El Diablo here, all right? Especially yeah. when El Diablo is on the screen, and I'm literally on the tweet, on following on my computer yeah, chatting. You're, you're literally, uh, you're just that chatting. good. That's yeah. how good he is. That's He's how hardcore, he is. guys. Casey is so hardcore that he can be in two places at once. You have no idea. <laughs> Well, it's really cool, though, that we've got this store open now because, you know, we're, we're getting to see people that we haven't seen since COVID. And yeah. So it's great. Thank you for coming out, oh, Casey. No we appreciate no you. You can hang out for a minute. We're probably going to yeah. wrap up in a second. Okay. And yeah, yeah. We're about to wrap up. Right you know? here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hang out with us. What else yeah. we got? Man, that's that's kind of it. You know, we got Wednesday, uh, Year in Horror, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And, of course, we mentioned the Arrow Video Show coming up on November the 1st. We'll get to see some of the cool stuff. They have coming out. I know they're bringing out a 4K of trimmers, which got me trembling with the trimmers because I love trembling trimmers. with the trimmers. Trembling with the trimmers. Um, that's it. So yeah, uh, now if you're not part of our Patreon yet, you can feel free to join our Patreon, get some exclusive shows. We're gonna do the next one probably in the next couple of weeks. I know the last one, guys, we had a little bit of a last minute Patreon show because all the craziness going on, but we're gonna give you guys more of a head up. And I think the Everybody likes Sundays, they'd mentioned. So we'll probably kind of go back to maybe a Sunday. Okay. Some on that time. So we'll Perfect. make it work, though. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in for whatever uh, that we need to do. So it's cool. All right, guys. Sure. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us. We talked about Knuckle Bones, guys. So remember knucklebones.org to get that pre order in. That's a good one. Mm hmm. So that's it. Thank you guys for coming out uh, and and uh, joining us here on the live stream today. If you want to come out, we're open until 10 tonight here at Frightmare Collectibles, and then we're open tomorrow noon to 6. So uh, we hope you see you here, and uh, that's it. Thank you to Casey and Cynthia Casey and, and Cynthia. Mitch Wilson, and thank you to Charles, because Charles you, Lloyd. is in charge. Well, Lloyd's in charge. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it. We will see y'all soon. Um, I don't have the outro video, so we're just going to kind of end the show. How does Don't do it to me. Whoa. Everything just went crazy, oh Charles. God. I won't I, tell. Okay, we're back now. I was Hi. just joking around. I did Welcome that all. Welcome to Frightmare HQ. We're going to do the whole show over again, guys. Today <laughs> we have Mitch joining us. <laughs> all right, y'all guys. Uh, peace out. Y'all have a great weekend, and we will.